and welcome to Law and Order. Of course, it's another week and we just have to talk about anything that has to do with, um, you know, your rights as citizens of the country. And if those rights have been violated or in any way uh, being dragged to the mud, as some people would say, then of course you have the right to redress. And that's why this program is very important, is looking at you know the law and order in the society. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Martia Umar. So oftentimes a lot of people just go to workplaces. You know, let's start from where people look for jobs and then they get to workplaces, they're having problems. Like I always say on the program, the law cut across every aspect of our lives and uh, the workplace is not an exemption. There are plethora of acts and laws that guide employers and of course employees in their workplaces and that's why we'll be taking a look at the Labour Act today. Get to understand the Labour Act, how important it is and to discuss that uh, we will be needing the help of a legal practitioner. Uh, of course I won't be doing that alone. Uh, we have a uh, a legal practitioner who has graced our studios today. His name is Yemi Olanio. He is um, somebody who has been at the forefront of, you know, encouraging um, very friendly work environment. And how does this happen, you know, by knowing the laws and applying them appropriately? Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Law and Order. Thank you very much for having me. So um, the Labour Act, you know, it's there are plethora of laws that actually uh, um, guide or safeguard the workers in Nigeria. So what's the importance of this Labour Act uh, to Nigerian workers? Okay, um, so in every society, it's important that the society has laws mm -hmm. that govern the affairs of that society, right? So it's the same thing with the Labour Act, same thing with the Constitution. The same way the Constitution governs um, the, the entire well-being of Nigerians in total. The Labour Act covers employer-employee relationship. Mm. So the Labour Act seeks to provide a benchmark of the relationship between an employer and an employee. It states what the employer is expected to do, what the employee is expected to do, the limits and bounds of the employer, and the rights and responsibilities of the employee. So it's an act that covers the old gamut, mm. which relates which relates to employer-employee relationship. So does this just uh, cut across um, workers in the public or, or private sectors are inclusive? So it covers everybody. Okay. So it's the law that governs employment law mm. in Nigeria. It's the Labour Act. So it's the principal law. The other acts like the Employees Compensation Act and all that. But the Labour Act is the principal legislation when it comes to labor when it comes to employment law in Nigeria. So it covers those in public and those in private. They must see it as a benchmark. Like I said, it's the benchmark. Mm. So there are, there are other things, other factors that come into play when it comes to employment, which is the contract. So but the Labor Act is the benchmark for upon which employment stands, basically. Okay, so, so it's, it's becoming interesting when you talk about a contract. How important is contract between an employee and he's our employer because you know a lot of people are excited i need a job nigeria's unemployment rate is soaring by the day i need a job and people just jump into jobs because you know i just need to do something i need to earn money and forgetting that you need to go through a contract you need to be given a contract so how important is this contract uh, so the contract is the um governing documents okay. with regards to that employment um, relationship. So the law just gives a benchmark. Your contract now defines the specifics okay. of that employment. So, um, so um, and, the, and the law says that every employment that, uh, and every employer must give the employee an employment contract. Okay. So you must have an employment contract. It's not enough for someone to say, oh, my dear, come, come and work for me. I'll pay so so and so mm -hmm. verbally. Mm -hmm. It's important that the person um, reduces into writing. So if there's any issue, say two weeks or three months down the line, everybody has a document that can say, okay, yes, this was meant to be done and this is not done. So the employment contract is compulsory. And the, and the act says three months, within three months, you must have given your employee an employment contract. So it's compulsory 
once you are employed in Nigeria, you must have an employment contract. An employment contract has certain things that must be contained therein okay. to make it valid, like every other contract would contain. So you must have certain things that must make it valid. I, I was going, to, uh, going over contract, you know, a way of research or something, and I know that there's a verbal contract. Are there exceptions where you, you just get a verbal contract that you can start a job and uh, probably... You know, no written contract might be needed. Are there exceptions? So, um, as much as you want to have a verbal contract, uh, it is not advisable because how do you enforce the terms of that contract? Okay. So, for example, let's 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 play. Let's do an example right now. Um, I employ you to come and um, uh, maybe um, be the MC for an event, and I say I'm going to pay you two hundred thousand per hour. Mm. Right, so, and let's say you do five hours, so that's one million. And then at the end of the five hours, you come and say, oh, where's my pay? And I say, oh, I did not really enjoy your job. I'm going to pay you 400,000. Oh. Right. The question now is, where is the proof that I said I was going to pay you one million? Hmm. All, you have, all you have is my word of mouth. And as you mean, there's, there's nobody else, there's no other person there. You have no witness to such. So verbal contracts are a no-no for me. Mm. Every contract that will determine the rights and responsibilities of parties must be reduced into writing. It gives a sense of responsibility and accountability to both for both parties. So everybody knows what, I, what I, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what you're supposed to do. So you must have an employment contract. It is, it is compulsory for you to have an employment contract. Okay, so before we delve into that verbal contract, we're talking about there are certain things that need to be contained in an employment contract. Does this differ from different sectors to, you know, another sector? Okay, so your employment contract would further contain the basics. Okay, what are the basics? So the basics would uh, move from name of the employer, okay. the address, name of the employee, Maybe his address. It states how much the amount you're going to be paid. Mm. It, it states the nature of employment. Is it a contract based employment? As, are we doing it for three months? Are we doing it for six months? Are we doing it for a year? Or is it a long term employment? Right? To state that. It is state the nature of business. What are you supposed to be doing for me? So basically, your job description mm. will also be contained in that, in that your. Yeah, employment contract. The employment contract also, will also contain issues of your t um, t your resumption hours. How long are you supposed to work for? Okay. It will contain your place of work. Are you meant to work just in so so and so, or I have the right to move you to varying places? It also contains issues of termination. How many hours my employment supposed to be terminated? Should I, should I, can, can, you, can you just tell me move and I, I move, or you have to give me notice if I want to resign? Am I supposed to give you salary in lieu of notice, or can I just resign? Okay. Am I supposed to give you two weeks' notice or three weeks' notice, or can I just resign? So it contains everything that would, that would ensure that there's an easy flow, both for entry and exit. Also, it also states your probation. It's not compulsory, but I was just compulsory for employers. Mm. And while I say it's compulsory for employers, because you're bringing someone new into your system, okay. the person will not know your culture. We don't know your practice rules or the work ethics, or the work, ethic, what, what work ethic of your of your organization. So, you want to use that probation period to for the person to understand your work ethics mm -hmm. and for you to understand the person's outputs. So, at the end of that probation period, I can I say, okay, we can keep you, or work for under one month. Let's see whether you can do better in the one month. Or I can see after probation period, say, okay, and carry your things and go. Mm. So. Now, it's very important that you, you're speaking about probation period. And a lot of people go through a lot when you know, they're on probation period. Are they allowed to seek redress in this period, maybe before the confirmation of the appointment in the office? So it's not depend on what they're seeking redress for. Mm. Right. So the Constitution already provided in Section 46 that every person whose, whose right has been, is being, or is likely to be infringed upon can approach a court of law for the court to determine his rights or his rights. So if you are in a probatory period 
and you feel like your right has been infringed upon based on the contract between you and your employer, yes, you can approach a court of law. Mm -hmm. Nothing stops you from approaching it. But you must be ensure that it's a right that is enforceable and it's a right that's been given to you within that period. So yes, whether or not you're a confirmed staff or you're a staff under probation, you can approach a court of law and say that this thing is wrong. So what, where does a contract staff stand in all of this? Are they, uh, you know, in the same category as every other employee you, you're talking about? Yes, the contract staff has the same, has the same right. So, that's, so once you have an employment contract, mm. the employment contract states your rights and your responsibilities. It states that, oh, you can resume at so-so time, at so-so so -so time, mm. you're entitled to so-so and so leave, you're entitled to so and so remuneration. So whether or not you're a contract staff or a normal full staff, as long as the content of your contract of employment will determine what and what you get. So the only, the only difference would be the fact that for a contract staff, your tenure is just, is, you, you have a termed employment. So at the end of six months, you know that this, term, this, this, is, this, this has come to an end, except if it's renewed. But if you are a full-time staff, you know that every year, unless your employer says you to, tells you to go or you resign, you are going to come to work. So that's the difference. But they have the same rights as contained in their employment contract. And that's why I have to restate it again, have an employment contract. Mm. So the employment contract now, you know, sometimes it's printed, or most of the times, yes, it's printed in black and white. And a lot of people have this perception that once something is written in black and white, it cannot be renegotiated. So where does it stand for employment contract? Can it be renegotiated? Yes, you can, you can negotiate every day. Okay. Yeah, so, um, and to tell me, it, it depends on the relationship between you and your employer. Mm. So I've signed a, a contract with you that this is this and this. But if for certain reasons, maybe you want to start closing, maybe you work a nine to five, I want to start working doing a nine to three, mm -hmm. come to your employer and say, sir, I can't even work a nine to five because of this, this and this. Can it, can it now be nine to three? And maybe uh, I, I, I'm okay with the salary cuts or I'm okay doing extra hours on so so and so days okay. just so that I can focus on this nine to three. So you can renegotiate your employment contract as long as parties agree. So one of the things that we say about contracts is that there must be mutual consent. Okay. Between mutual the parties, consent be between both between parties. Between both parties okay. that, okay, this is what I want to do and you have accepted it. And that's what you see in, in contracts, basic is offer an acceptance. Okay. So I've said that this is what I want and your, your, your employer agrees. And I must say this, that at, um, when you're renegotiating, ensure you have the approval in writing. Because you already have your contract in writing. So that is the principal document governing your relationship. Now, if you're going to renegotiate, it's important that you negotiate in writing, mm. such that if tomorrow you say that, ah, okay, this is and your employer saying, I did not give you an approval. Once you have a letter from him, signed by him or signed by the company that says, oh, yes, I am, I've permitted you to close at three, then you're well within your rights to close at three. But if you don't have anything, if you just said, okay, don't worry, just go and do it. When, when, when issues come up tomorrow, who do you hold? The employer might most likely deny you. So it's important that you have the employment contract mm. and you have that negotiated agreement signed. Mm. And let it not be like, oh, it's an in-house affair. We're yeah. going to, you know, <laughs> see how we can do this in-house. Yeah. All right. If you're just joining us, we are trying to understand the Labour Act and how it affects, uh, you know, the work environment, the people in the work environment. I mean, the employers and, of course, the employees. We'll go for this short break. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. You're still watching Law and & Order. On today's episode, we are talking about the Labour Act. We're trying to understand the Labour Act. If you are a worker in Nigeria, of course, this is very important for you. And we've been having this discussion with Yemi Olanio. He's a lead partner of Lehi Atonis. And of course, I've got human rights talks and uh, doings. He has been in the forefront of that. So thank you so much for being here. 
Thank you, Father. So um, uh, we've been having this discussion uh, around the Labor Act, and you did talk about the contract staff. The staff, of course, they're, they are all embodied in this Labor Act. Now, you know, the Labor Act, you know, is one of those laws. There are other laws, you know, suffices for the Labor Act. So what are some of these laws? Okay, so there are other laws that, um, that relate, and some of them are industry-specific. Okay. So, we, for example, we have the Employees, Employees Compensation Act. Mm -hmm. It's really closely related to the um, NSITF. Um, so you have the PENCOM, you have um, IRS, you also have um, NICOM is related to the insurance insurance industry. Um, yes, yeah, so you have you have those laws that also seek to um, provide a sort, a sort of um, coverage or a source of um, um, protection mm. for both the employers and the employees. So as an employer, you should, you should ensure that you're paying the pension of your staff, you are remitting your tax that is due. Um, the law says um, your so pension is supposed to remit 8% from the staff and 10% from the employee. So that's 18% altogether. So that's that's what an employee and an employer must do. So those laws are there in order to put. So every employer, the law says that every employer does. When we are it, most employers do not. And then okay, that is statutory, right? Yes, that's statutory. Yes. Oh, the pension is statutory. Yes, it is. Oh, so what happens if um, a company or a workplace does not do that? There are penalties for, for not for What not kind of penalties that. are we looking at? Sometimes financial penalties. They will, they really, really will pen come say, oh, close down your business for not. The pen come just add, will just say you should pay that, make, 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 make that payment, and there will be penalties attached, financial penalties most times attached to it. So it's an employee's right for the pension to be deducted from his salary and remitted. And also, the, the company must remit its own percentage also. Okay. So, we have a lot of people who are being promised, um, you know, I'm going to give you an employment contract, I'm going to give you an employment letter. Let's talk about the employment letter. The employment letter, a lot of people work in Nigeria without an employment letter. I can tell you, as a matter of fact, at some point in my life, I worked in an organization for years and there was no employment letter. So, what happens in that uh, situation? What is that employee uh, supposed to do in that situation? Ask for an employment letter. Because what if you ask for it and you're not given? They don't work. Now, see, the reality is that the country is, um, we might have employers that will tend to take advantage of their employees. Mm. And the best thing for you, for you as an employee is to ensure you are protected. And your protection comes in your written documents. Not by, not by um, working, or not by working, and someone knows you're working at a certain place. Mm. Your, 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 your protection comes with that written document. For example, when it comes to issue, and this problem usually comes with wages okay. and termination. Mm. So if there is no employment letter, no employment contract, and I wake up tomorrow and say, oh, do you know, my dear, up and go, I no longer leave your services. And, and I do that even without pay. Sometimes you're left stranded. What is the proof that you have been working with me? What is the proof that indeed I'm supposed to pay you so so and so amount of money? But there is no letter and there is no contract covering our relationship. So, as an employee, it is important that you get the employment contract and you go through it. I mean, they say the devil is in the, is in the details, right? You ensure they go through it to ensure that the terms are not too averse to you. Obviously, the employer will draft that agreement to benefit himself and his company. So you want to ensure that the terms are terms that you're comfortable with and you can work with, mm -hmm. and, and the env environment is such that you can work with and deliver your best. Okay. So in a case where, you know, such, you, you give an example, you know, stating a, a scenario where somebody goes to work and then at some point the employer is saying, I cannot have you here anymore. What if I want to, you know, seek redress? I've been coming here, a lot of people know me. Could that stand as a basis for me in a court of law? They know you as what? As somebody who comes to the office every day. On what basis? What what is what is the governing document that would that would say that we had an employment contract? So that excuse does not hold water. In summary, because you 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 are you're not going to be in a very very dicey situation with the courts. Um, courts is based on facts and evidence. Okay. 
So if you have no documents that states that you're working for so so and so period, then how do you want to prove that indeed you're working for so and so period? Is it amount of people so would the or your other, other employees come and testify and say that yes, Oga was employing this person? They wouldn't want they wouldn't want to do that. What if they do testify? What if they do testify? Then it's not left for the court to decide one way or the other. Most times the courts might most likely never ever grant you your release because there's no document. I, I'm, I don't know you. I have, I, have, I have nothing to show. But again, there's, there, there might be exceptions. And it depends on how you're ready to prove your case. But really, to avoid such situations, it's best you have that contract that will govern your relationship. Okay, now if you're in a workplace and you know any injustice is meted in you, uh, maybe the work environment is not what you expected or what was in that contract you signed. What are you supposed to do? So that's why um, that's why um, offices have um, human resource departments. Okay. Channel your complaint to your, to your um, human resource department to the MD. Okay. I wish you have it in writing. Okay. Because um, so that you're building up your case just in case something happens and then you're told to just leave. So you'll be able to seek redress and mm. get your reliefs. Have it in writing that this and this is contrary to paragraph so so and so of our employment contract. I hereby ask the company to seek a redress for so so and so this for this one. Yes, yeah. So you, you must seek, you must meet the company and ask for a redress first. Then, if you're obviously no longer interested in working with them, then you can now run them to court because there's no employer that you to court and to keep you in his employment. Mm. As, so um, you've been on the field, you've handled cases of, you know, some of these problems between employee and employers. How has it been so far? Do you think the fight against, you know, a serene workplace in Nigeria is, you know, very close? Yeah, so I must say that um, the National Industrial Court, I must say this, uh, is the cause that is primarily um, char charged with dealing with employment matters in Nigeria. That's the courts that the Constitution has given the powers to, to determine employment contracts. So yes, I would say that we're making progress. We're making good progress when it comes to um, employer-employee relationship. I mean, the courts would obviously look at the facts and the evidence and would look at, okay, yes, this employee has certain rights and this employer has breached those rights. So you must be able to show and that's why I always say, have everything documented. Mm. Because the courts believe what it sees, not what it hears mm. most times. So the, the rule is that um, documentary evidence always trumps oral evidence. The Evidence Act is clear on that. So you want to ensure that you, you have documents that will protect you and protect what you want and, and give you what you want. So um, the Nigerian law is developing and we're getting to advanced stages. So. One thing, that, and one of the things that Nigerian law does presently is um, the courts are, are charged to to apply international best practices okay. when it comes to law. So even things that are not in our laws, but once it's done internationally and it's a fair practice, then the courts would would uh, would allow it. Um, so I think one of the things that um, one of the ways that it came to Nigeria was recently. I think 2021. Um, the, um, the federal government now permitted fathers to go on paternity leave. Yes. So fathers, fathers can now go for 14 days. Okay. Oh, 14 days. Yes. I think that's in Two the weeks. public sector. Mm, just and, and, and that only applies to the public sector. Okay. So the private sector can latch onto it. It's and left to their discretion. Yes, it's solely okay. at their discretion now. Right. They can say, okay, yes, since federal government is doing 14 days, we can do 14 days or we can do 10 days. Right. So it's, it's not compulsory. They must do 14 days. Only federal government that has said it's 14 days now. Now, one interesting thing I must say is about leave. Now, the Labor Act says that leave should not, should not go below six days. Most people have their leaves for three weeks. It's not statutory. It's just your employer. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay, that is not statutory. Yes. But sometimes it's been stated that you're entitled to 28 days leave or 30 days leave. That's the, that's the agreement between the parties. Okay. So, so some people have 10 days leave okay. in a year. Some people have 15 days leave in a year. Some people have 20 days leave. Some people have 21 days leave. But the access must not go below six days. So six days is minimum for a yearly employment. Is minimum for yearly employment. So you must ensure that every year, that every year you take your leave 
and they ensure that so the employer will state, okay, this leave must be from so so and so period, so so and so period. It must not be. It's not be three weeks. Mm. It can be six days. It can be seven days. Okay, so it cannot go below, below six, six days. days. Yes, that is statutory. That's statutory. Yes. Okay, so um, in other words, we are getting to, you know, that space or that time where we say that Nigeria is working according to best practices. Yes, that's right. The National Industrial Court. I must. I must say this. Um, despite the present National Industrial Court is doing great work in ensuring that the the courts observe best practice. And that's and the court is one of the fastest courts in Nigeria. The National Industrial Court is one of the fastest courts okay, in Nigeria. Okay, because I was going to talk about delays in court. That's what, <laughs> you know, uh, discourage a lot of people to seek redress when they find yourself in very difficult situation. Matters ordinarily that the law would take care of without even causing a lot of problem, but because of the delays, I hope the judiciary is actually working on that. Yeah, they are, especially for the National Industrial Court, I can tell you, you can conclude your matters, your matters um, in three to six months, one year, depending on how parties are ready to work. All right, uh, thank you very much. Due to time constraint, we cannot have a, you know more conversation, but I know that the Labour Act is very wide, yes, and you can keep talking about the Labour Act for, you know, <laughs> Even to the next six episodes, we're yes, still discussing the Labour Act. But I hope you'll be here another time so we continue the discussion. But at this time, our time is up. But thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I am your Lani Yong. He is the lead partner of Lehi Tonis, And he has been our guest today discussing, making us understand the Labour Act and how it's been applied in workplaces. Uh, for more updates, you know you can follow us on all our social media platforms. Uh, if you want to watch Law and Order again, you have to go to our YouTube page. A search for Trust TV forward slash law and other. And of course, you can watch our previous episode and this episode as well. My name is Martia Umar. Join us again next time as we will be talking about more issues that concern you as a citizen of this country. I mean, you're right. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.